Hey guys, welcome to the shop. You're on the wrong channel. <laughs> no, that's not true. I have not hijacked Adam Booth's channel. Adam is here in the shop. Come on around, Adam. I have, I have distinguished guests. We finished loading the machine. Um, today, I think we truly qualify as the hardest working people on YouTube. Um, we, uh, we've moved some heavy iron today. We've moved some heavy iron. <laughs> We've proved that a 5,000 pound forklift will pick up 8,000 pounds of hardware. It will. And uh, everybody has all their extremities, phalanges, and other such parts. Nobody's been injured. We got all of our digits, no cuts, no bruises, no black fingers. Still count to 10, I mean, nine, I mean 10. Uh, the, uh, the machine didn't get any bruises on it. Nope. It's good to go. And uh, I'm really excited about this, man. <laughs> this ought to be fun. This ought to be a good time. And, yeah. uh, I, you know, I, uh, I had a, a other friend of mine ask me, why are you getting rid of the machine? So, well, I'm not really using it. I don't have other, you know, people working in the shop with me, generally. I don't, so I'm not, not like I'm running two, three machines at one time. I, I mean, every now and then I might have something going on the mill and something going on the lathe at the same time. Occasionally, right? You know. I know the feeling. Not when you're doing a video, though. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. You don't have time to do that. Time. <laughs> plus, plus you, you'll, you'll be thinking about the video and you'll crash something. So, uh, so I decided, you know, this, you know, I got the big machine down here. Uh, I'll go ahead and let this one go. And uh, you were interested, and I couldn't think of a better person I'd like to see use it and actually get some mileage out of it and uh, make some money with it. You know, well, somebody says, what do you make with your machines? And I always like to say, money. I like to try to make money with my machines, and I can say that I make a little bit of money with my machines. But uh, I, uh, I'm looking forward to getting into the shop. And uh, James actually sent me an email one day out of the blue and said, uh, hey, I've got this K&T over here I'd like to get out of my way. You want to come and take a look at it and maybe take it home with you? So he sent me a couple pictures of it, and I was like, that's exactly what I need in my shop, man. That's one thing that I'm missing is a horizontal mill. Oh, and, uh, yeah. and so I had to jump on the opportunity. And uh, I think I'm getting a fine machine, and it's uh, it's just got a couple of little minor things yeah. that needs uh, some TLC, nothing major. And um, I think it's going to be a nice heavy-duty mill for my shop. It's a, it's a nice cut machine. It's a seven and a half horsepower machine. It's a three series. Uh, it's compact for, as you see, the mass. It's very heavy, stout machine, extremely rigid. Um, it'll put seven and a half horsepower to the horizontal arbor or the vertical spindle. So you can put seven and a half horsepower to a five or six inch face mill, for instance, right? Which just makes, uh, you know, skimming off big parts just just cake well right? what i'm looking forward to is uh getting a big old shaft up in there and put a big one inch cut oh yeah let's mill some one inch keyways one, oh yeah it is a four keyways it, it is a it is a keyway cutting oh, yeah. monster and uh yeah. you know what you make yourself is make you a uh make you an outboard support i uh, like um i've seen uh, somebody's got one on. who has one on, on youtube uh keith's got one got an outboard support that's actually in another room. He actually has a hole in the wall. Oh, okay. uh, but make you an outboard support where you can level up. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then, yeah, you can put big shafts in there. I've cut, yeah. I've had, uh, I've had the doors open and had shafts out sticking out towards the driveway. I know the feeling we used to in my old shop. And we, fortunately, we had a jib crane outside. Well, so, hey, we, so we could yeah. hold it with the jib crane and it would move around as we moved the mill table. Around. Yeah, yeah, that's and handy. It, it was nice, but. Uh, that's handy. I'm gonna have the uh, gantry crane uh, in the shop pretty soon, so I'll have some lifting capabilities. Cause that that vertical head, oh my God, what's that thing weigh? Five or six hundred pounds. I was gonna say at least yeah. five hundred pounds. Yeah. That thing's a beast. So there it, ain't no picking it up, setting it up on no, the machine. Not unless you're, you know, Hulk Hogan or something. Like that <laughs> that uh, 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 a gantry will make that a much safer and oh, yeah. easier deal. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I can. I've got a gantry in here, which yep. I mean, we do a little walk around in a second. You can show everybody that I've got a gantry here. I can move, I can change it by myself. I mean, after you do it a couple times, you you can do it pretty quick. Um, that machine, there's actually a hole in the top. There's a hole in the top of the column with a little plug in it, and it's it's pretty good size. But that machine had optionally had a had an arm that you could 
It was an articulated arm. Right, I've seen you, them on other machines. You could grab, you could, you just had a hook that was at a fixed height, and you just grab the head, unbolt it, and swing it out. Yeah. And you could do something like that if you if you're if you find yourself changing back and forth often. Yeah. Um, that may be helpful because yeah. you know that, that change over time, that kind of stuff in the shop is really. I, did, I didn't see one in the picture, and I was wondering if, if, if that machine had it. It has no, the capability sure, for it. Sure. Yeah, there, there's a there's a hole in the top, about two inch hole in the top. Yeah, where it has the capability for it. We might check into that later down the road yeah. and see. It might be another project. Man. That's a project. Oh, you got project, and you have just picked up like. <laughs> We've got enough right now. You, you picked I've up got a lot to finish of projects. my ceiling too, man. I got a lot to do. Yeah, yeah. Your sheetrock so, guy is uh, working hard over in there. Yeah. He, <laughs> taking his time, I'll tell you that. Oh well. <laughs> If you get a good well, deal, that's what it's all, that's all about. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, your sheetrock looks a lot nicer than mine. You still got the open joist. Yeah, <laughs> I have no sheetrock. Well, well uh, do you, you find that it's brighter, easier to see in there as you get more of the sheetrock in there? Is it lighter? Yeah, it makes it it makes it brighter. Of course, mine's closer to me. Than you yeah. got a, you got a, what a fifteen foot? Fifteen foot, yeah, fifteen foot. But um, I'm going to be painting mine gloss white, so it'll help reflect more of the light down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, anyway, yeah, grab the camera and let's. Um, have we'll do a little. We're gonna do a little walkthrough yeah. because James doesn't really ever show much of his shop. It's always a mystery what's behind here. So, we're gonna do a little walk around and see some of the things that you probably haven't seen in this video. Right now, being the mess. <laughs> All right, so uh, we'll be right back. Here's my little mill. Here's here's uh, James's big boy mill here. I thought this turning tractor was big, but this one over here kind of dwarfs this one a little bit. <laughs> Man, I told him, I said, you need a step stool to get up and work on this thing. This thing's a monster. said this thing weighs, you said it weighs about 12,000 pounds? It was 12,000. 12, According to the guy who took it off the truck, it's instrument and forklift said. Yep. And the forklift would fit in the building. Uh, it's like mine. So this is, uh, this is kind of coming towards the front. Got my grinder here. This is a 12 inch ball door. Um, Bit many, many hours behind this grinding the tool bits. Um, that's, but good. that's a good grinder right there. <laughs> if you got, if you got to grind a lot of tool bits, you want something like this. I got a, a 36 grit on that side. I got a 60 grit on this side. It'll put a real nice edge on. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are starting to use uh, belt grinders. But you got to be careful because when you that belt, when you're when you're grinding with that belt, with the belt hitting your work. What happens is, is it forms a little bump in the belt, a little roll where that belt goes around there, and you won't get that super sharp, perfect vertical edge that you're looking for on a tool tip. All right. Well, we had a little uh, battery issue. Yeah. Um, so Adam just took the little Kearney Trekker away to. When yeah, I'm taking the small one. Well, I think this one's a little more suited for what I do, but we're gonna yeah, yeah. we're gonna go ahead and let this one sit here. I don't have a forklift big enough to <laughs> handle it. Yeah, uh, and I've had this on video several times. It's a 415 S15 uh, with the powered overarm, and uh, it, it's really a fine machine. It's uh, uh, you know people don't be afraid to put something like this in your shop if you have an opportunity to buy something like this. At a good price, and generally you do. <laughs> They're generally cheap. Yeah. Uh, if you have a chance to put something like this in your shop, do it. Trust me, you won't regret it. You'll realize real quick that your bridge port's a drill press, and this is a milling machine. Like right? he says, the, the bridge port's a wannabe. Yeah. This is a real mill, right? This here. is a real mill. <laughs> I mean, you got 42 inches of x-axis travel. You got probably, I don't know, maybe 30 inches of z. Probably 18 table. or 20 inches. I can't yeah. even touch the ends of the table. Uh, 14 inch wide table. I mean, it's it's just, and and I paid less than chicken right for this. I paid I paid yeah. $600 for this machine. The big challenge is moving it. Yeah. Right. 
but yeah, it's, it's, you, you end up spending money on the, the, the rental for the forklift or sure. trying to find somebody that can uh, help you get it moved around, which is another challenge altogether. So this, we'll move over to the pacemaker. So there's this lathe that you never see. This the lathe you never see because the contact is busted. But the um, this is a, a, a 16 uh, by, uh, it's an 18 by 54 pacemaker. Um, it's a 27 speed headstock, goes up to 2000 RPM. Uh, it was, uh, this is not the heavy duty version, this is the regular duty, it's a five belt uh, sheave. Cuts every standard thread you could ever want to cut. Uh, it has a lot of production features on it uh, that you don't see a lot of normal lathes. Um, uh, this is a, they have a stop system where you can set up feed stops, multiple stops on this dovetail rail here. And then this right here is the attachment that grabs the stop. So you can set up to do repeated cuts to length. Nice. And, uh, and this uh, allows you to, to repeat very nicely. And it's about 15 horsepower machine. Um, it's on the biggest breaker in the place. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the American pacemakers are nice heavy duty lays. Uh, anybody watching my videos know that I run one at work, except it's a much bigger pacemaker than this, but another nice machine right here. Yeah, this is, you can you can throw chips can, and light things on fire. You can do some chip control with a pacemaker. Yeah. Uh, and we got, we got some stuff moving around because we had to clear out space for Adam's machine move, but this is my horizontal mil uh, bandsaw that we just did a, the uh, vice shoe project on here. Yep. And um, it's an LS2000. Uh, a lot of people talk about, you know, the LS's are all welded machines. They're built as weldments. They're American-made machines. Uh, you know, simply so oh, it's a light duty machine. This has been a great machine for me. It, uh, it miters up to 60 degrees. So if you don't have a big space where you can move stock around and cut miters, this, this really saved your tail right here. And uh, Ellis is a nice machine. It's a man. nice machine. It'll, it'll, it's, uh, it's a full size. Uh, it's a one inch blade. Uh, it takes a 12 foot one inch blade. So it's a, it's a real common blade size too. You can pick those up uh, pretty good. Um, run Linux blades. That's my bandsaw tip. Mm -hmm. Linux. Linux. You got another uh, bandsaw here. Looks like a big vertical. This is a dual 20 inch. Uh, this came out of a carpet factory. They used it to cut the cardboard tubes that they rolled carpet upon oh, yeah. uh, in wholesale. Uh, so when I got it, it was absolutely completely full of uh, cardboard dust, right? But, um, man, I'd like to jump on here since we're moving up around. Uh, this, these are great machines here. These are low range, high range machines. Uh, you can go down to you know, 20, 30 service feet per minute up to you know, 2,000, 3,000 subject feet per minute. So uh, you can cut, I mean, you can cut, you know, anything. Lightweight material with that high surface speed. You can also really get down low and, and cut uh, tool steels and other difficult to cut machines. It has a welder on it. Yeah. If you want to do some old school uh, band blade work and some profiling, uh, it's a great, great machine. Oh, uh, well, we got various things down here. This is a large, it's a Troik 18 inch rotary table on a little cart. Um, and uh, it's for sale. Uh, <laughs> I bought this uh, years ago for, for a job and used it for one, you know, a couple of jobs. Um, I really love it and wish I could take it home, but I don't think I brought enough cash with me. And it's, uh, uh, oh, this is the, this is yours. Okay. It, um, it's a beautiful, it is an absolute beautiful table. These two eye bolts are what I use to, to pick it up with. And um, it is an absolutely beautiful table. It's in, yeah. uh, literally, I kid you not, it's in brand new shape. And, uh, I, you know, it's not easy to use. This isn't something you're going to throw up on your, uh, you know, 6 by 36 mil. No, no, you got to have a big machine. You got to have a big machine. Well, what else we got, man? Let's go, uh, we'll go this way. Okay. They haven't uh, seen you grant the engine frame and yeah. the back This tool storage here, I got, um, uh, I love these. These are those little uh, Huat uh, oh, yeah. uh, drill bit storage. Nice. Drill index. So you got all your numbered sizes. 
Um, all your uh, index, your regular fractional sizes, letter sizes, fantastic. I like uh, that. I need to invest yeah. in one of these. With a key, notice it has a key. Key When the, prime when, when the kids are in your shop, lock it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did a video on this. This is my, I call this my poor man's list of cabinet. <laughs> and uh, it's real heavy. <sighs> but this is kind of my, my little lathe uh, workstation here. It's got a lot of my uh, got the A bomb approved, A bomb approved uh, indicators, pancake mag base indicators, and then this is most of my uh, taps, dies, and uh, and lathe tooling in here. I got some got some end mills and stuff in here. A lot of reamers, mm -hmm. uh, but I, it's uh, this is a piece of uh, UHMW signboard that I yep. cut up for you know hold my chucks and things that are close at hand. So when you're working. You can waste a lot of time running around the shop and looking for stuff. Right? Gotta be organized. You gotta be organized. It pays off. And then I got I got two of these big listers. And um, oh man, look at you got all kind of stuff. In precision there. tools in there. Cutters. Tool bits. Tool now, bits. If, if you if you ever didn't trust the weight weighting on these things, that drawer right there ought to set your mind at ease, right? Uh, uh, I haven't shown you on my big drill drawer on the list at the house. So this, this is big drill bits, uh, some big nails, some tacks. Hey, 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 go back. I recognize these. There's all your little wooden boxes. Yeah. That your eBay finds, man, all the taps there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I'm a sucker for an old box of taps. Um, remember those boxes where I said I got three things in? Yeah, yeah. So here, here, here's some of the stuff I got right here. Okay. Like, uh, here, hold on a second. Here, take all these things. These are, uh, here you go, here you go, cameraman. Uh, these uh, are drill bits. They're, they're good bits, they're little, they're, uh, but they're all the same size. The bars, uh, the five eighths, so these are, these are halves, I think they're five eighths or, um, so we got, I mean, air tools here. Right. I love the list of cabinets. Um, you won't see these very often, these are actually collets these are 6R collets that go in the Revet. Um, and uh, so it looks like a Magnum R8, right? Is what it looks like. Yeah. Uh, and I've been collecting a, a few here and there. Um, I think that literally that's the only machine that was ever made to fit it. This is the center. This is the uh, okay. uh, 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 a dead center that goes yeah. in there. For using your uh, yeah. drive, drive dog plate. So I got some excess uh, plenty, tool holders, of tool plenty of tool holders plenty of tool holders when they go on sale for 10 bucks you pick some up huh? buy a couple dozen right because I mean you never know yeah um, taper shank drills taper shank drills baby milling cutters yep. drill bits yeah all sorts of stuff yeah and uh, uh, some some dividers uh, inside, dividers. inside inside spring caliper outside very nice spirits uh, more taper shanks um, Five sixteenths by twenty four taps. Oh yeah, there's the mother load. The mother load. Jacob's rubber flex collet. Jacob Ruth rubber flex. Love me some rubber flex. Let me tell you, when you got nice. odd sizes, rubber flex is oh, fantastic. Yeah. To get in between. Um, I got some uh, jig bore style boring gear here, which is fifty taper, mm -hmm. which uh, was a was an absolute was an eBay. Like I felt bad, bad. I didn't even know it was coming in the box. I paid like twenty dollars for for like for this boring head here, right? Yeah. You know, uh, square shank boring head. This this reminded me a little bit of that small boring head you were using the other day that has a um, it takes a square. Mine takes, takes a, a half inch tool bit. Takes a half inch on a, on a forty five degree angle. Um, these are uh, bushings for horizontal okay. arbors, Arbors. and then uh, these are all the big boxes are all running bushings. The big bushings okay. go through the supports mm -hmm. and, uh, various and sundry parts some welding and you know you see I, I got some brushes and some chippers a um, bunch of uh, form, form tools oh, okay for cutting different types of o-ring grooves so you get them you can get these made and they're they're really if you're gonna do a lot like you do a lot of o-ring groove cutting yeah you take them and you grind it off yeah, it's, it's, it it's just made like an old school um, like uh, threading, threading the, the tool. Threading yeah. tool. Yeah. I've got a ton of these things, different o-ring. I used to do a lot of uh, o-ring fit work. 
and uh, this is all 5C and uh, D13, uh, full set of 5C collets and some hexes and some squares thrown in there. Little 5C indexers, a 5C collet chuck, um, a little uh, a three inch pot chuck. Use a lot of the 5C. It's a good. That's a good working size. Uh, all right. Nice drawer. So this all is right. um, this is D1. This is all my uh, D13 attachments for the Revet. Right here by the lathe. Uh, six jaw chuck, four jaw chuck, rubber flex chuck. Uh, bull nose center, uh, drive plate for some um, mm -hmm. uh, dog work, um, uh, Shogrin 5C chuck, and a uh, face plate. This is actually a 10 double E face plate uh -oh. that, fits, somebody could use that. that fits the same machine, <laughs> thankfully. And uh, this is the shaper here. I've done some shaper work. People love shaper work on YouTube. It's that, it's that, it's that. That smooth back and forth motion, baby. <laughs> I've done, I played with mine a little bit, but yeah. I'm not much of a shaper user, so uh, everybody keeps asking why I'm going to show the shaper. This is, now this this is a shaper that's big enough where you can actually do some work. Yeah. You know, uh, it's a 20 inch, five horsepower machine. It'll, it'll take a nice cut. It'll throw a chip all the way across the room. Yeah. It's got a lot of mass. It's got to a lot it. of mass. Very rich machine. It's got a lot. Yeah. Like got the universal you, table. On. Universal table. These are great for cutting angles. And you know, every now and then you get that cut on the mail, and you wonder to yourself, how in the world am I going to do that? And the shaper can be a lifesaver. Dad yeah. used to Dad used to tell me because uh, he had a big shaper. It was a 32 inch shaper, and he told me that uh, whenever you had a big block of steel that you had to take a lot of metal off, he says you just set that thing up and you just let it start taking big old heavy cuts, and you walk over there and keep doing what. Yeah, keep doing your other work and why that thing's cutting. Yeah, and he used to do a lot of that. Now this corner back here, this is just this is mostly storage here. More tools. Is, well, actually, this is kind of this is kind of office supply stuff here. A little, a little bit of tools, but but uh, you know, photography equipment, paper, uh, Norton Norton rolls. Oh, okay, some uh, emery cloth. You can't have too many. You can't have too many shop rolls, right? I mean. Uh, I keep a few around my place. Lapping compound, abrasive, kind yeah. of, you know, stuff that I don't use real often is up in here. Yeah. Um, and over here, this is um, this is just mechanics tools, sort of the dirt. We've been doing some work upstairs, and it kind of comes down. But this is just mechanics tools here, um, and a few tap and die sets that. Uh, I've seen those before. Yeah, I, there's that big one, that uh -huh. big green field. It's yep. a beauty. Yeah. And uh, so I got a got a few. I got okay. Maybe I got more than a few tap and die sets. Oh yeah. So I got a problem. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you're gonna have. And this right here, this, anymore. Is, this is a lot of. This is uh, R8 tooling in here. Mostly mill tooling here. Um, <coughs> face plates. Some other. Uh, Tailstock chuck, which is great, by the way. Yeah. I mean, Tailstock chuck is fantastic. Sweet. I got a spindle speeder, uh, a 50 taper spindle speeder, so it'll it'll take a, a 2500 RPM or up to 2500 in, and it gives you three to one out. So you can get like 7,000 out. So wow. You, you can put a little three eighths inch end mill in there and hit some aluminum and just yeah, yeah. Zings let it let it scream. Yeah. yeah. Boring bars. Yeah. You got um, a lot of tooling stashed away, man. Well, I'm, I got a new list of coming, a new to me list of coming. Yeah. South Bend taper attachment. That actually goes on my uh, Revet. That fits the Revet. Oh. I'm just starting on this as a project. Just started cleaning this up. Uh, let me tell you, you want to try to find something that's rare? Finding a taper attachment for a Revet 1020? Hard to find, huh? Yeah, really hard to find. Look, I, no, it, I, I, honestly, I didn't find it. Somebody that knew I had the lathe contacted me. Cool. And said, "Hey, you might want this, you know." And I'm like, "Holy moly, right?" Uh, this is my office up here. Uh, computers. You know, this is where I do my 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 you know the work I don't like, right? The clerical work, the the, the computer work, the QuickBooks, that kind of stuff. My books. Um, little welding table here for just rolling around the shop. And uh, this is where the big machine was. Pick up some space. It was right here. Yeah. 
Adam's machine under my gantry, my little uh, little rolling around gantry. Yeah, that's more of a like Yeah, this is a it's a two power. Yeah. Uh, this this is actually this is a a, a, a Vespa brand. This is the brand that Petrol sells. I'll be honest, I'm a little nervous about buying it, but uh, this thing's rock solid. It was a dollar pound, right? I mean, you really can't complain. Eight thousand pound gantry, uh, you know, that's really a really a good deal. You know, if anybody's thinking about it and you're a little on the on the edge, did it come with the chain fall? No, I had to, I had to buy the chain fall stuff. Oh, yeah, I was just wondering if it was the same color. <laughs> uh, in the corner here, I'm probably going to do a whole video on this, but this is my, uh, try to move it. my material rack. It goes all the way back, right? Oh, yeah. So this thing's like 10 feet long, and it's on some metal casters. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's all sorts of material, solid, stock, plastic, metal. Yep. Uh, all sorts of stuff on here, so I'll do a whole video on this. Over here we got welder. I got an HDP uh, 240 amp unit, the uh, 2400. Um, not a real common brand, but uh, uh, let me tell you, it, it's it's a copper transformer. That's all I got to say. Real copper transformer. It's not in this aluminum, yeah, zip zap biz bass box, right? This is a good old fashioned <laughs> welder. Uh, nice big compressor. That's an Eaton compressor out of Ohio. Those guys, you see them a lot on eBay. Uh, it's a 15 horsepower compressor slowed down to run a 10 horsepower motor. Okay. And uh, it's not too loud. Um, I've got a, my, my air system's all plumbed with uh, half inch nylon air brake tubing for trucks. Yeah. And uh, okay. it's just press fit. So if I want to put a drop in, Clip, press, nice. and uh, it doesn't leak. It's a beauty, right? So yeah. my compressor might run one, once a day if I don't if I don't touch the system. Yeah. Right. And uh, I, got, I got double, I got double drives, water traps, double water traps, water trap, filter, regulator, and another water trap. Uh, it's humid here in Mississippi, right? So it's humid down in Florida too. Oh, we got machining. Machining content. This is a Lagoon 5 horsepower 40 taper head that I want to try to adapt to my existing Perco R8 mill. Yep. And uh, that's a project that's coming up. It's got the 40 taper, 40 taper spindle. Yeah. 5 horsepower Baldo motor. Mm -hmm. um, very nice. And uh, there's a shot of the, or this is the machine that he's going to. Adapted to. So we're going to put it on. Yeah. yeah. Now, they have this on here. Here's an RA three horsepower uh, machine. So, and this 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 head is. I mean, it works, but it the, the variable speed is just flat clapped out. It makes a ton of noise. And I mean, I don't even like working with it. Right? Because it's so loud. I mean, you know, you're already tired. You're having a long day. That loud noise just wears you down. And uh, so. This one's, I mean, this one's not new, but it's a lot better shape than this one, right? So, yeah. uh, what I'm probably going to do after I take, if I, if I get this one moved over, is I'll probably take this one and give it a rebuild. Maybe I can just hold it as a spare or, you know, sell it on eBay, trade it to somebody yeah. else. You know, maybe somebody's got a, a fixed pulley head and they want to upgrade. And, uh, well, dude, uh, I think that's about it for my battery right there. That's yeah, it? It's about to die again on it, so I think we better go ahead and sign off. Sign off for now. I'm glad everything went good today. I was, uh, it was nice to finally get to meet you in person. Yeah, definitely. And I appreciate the uh, the good deal on the, on the milling machine that uh, James gave me. And, and I've had fun coming through here and checking out his shop. It's always fun coming in somebody else's uh, machine shop and seeing what all we got. Because somebody's always got something that you don't have. And it's fun just to poke through the uh, cabinets anyway. Amen to that. Amen to that. Let's see what else you got to try right. to hunt down. Yeah. So we're going to uh, we're gonna sign off and we're going to go get us some dinner. We'll Amen see you guys that. later. Yes, indeed.